Okay, as always, there will be a link to the note-taking guide in the description below. Um, all right, chapter 11 is called Circumference, Area, and Volume. 11.1 .1 is Circumference and Arc Length. Okay, so circumference, uh, it, you can just think of it as the perimeter of a circle. You don't call it the perimeter, you call it the circumference, but it's just the distance around the outside of a circle. Okay. And there's a formula for it that you've seen before, um, and that's 2 pi r. And since the radius is half the length of the diameter, so if you did 2 times r, that would be the same as the, the diameter, so you could also use pi times diameter. That would also work. Okay. Um, circumference formula is not um, pi r squared. That's the area formula for a circle, so those get confused sometimes, so just make sure you don't get them mixed up. Okay. All right, so let's start off by just finding the circumference of these two circles. So this first one, I can see that the radius is 7 centimeters. That's all I really need. So 2 pi r and 7 is the r, and so that's going to come out to 14 pi. Okay, you could leave it in that format. You could leave it in terms of pi, um, and that would be fine. Or you could also do a decimal approximation um, in a calculator. And it would come out to something close to, uh, to 43.98 centimeters. Um, so if you're ever asked for the exact value, then you'd want to give it in terms of pi, because the, the uh, decimal is, is rounded. That's not exact. Okay. All right. So um, in order to find the circumference, all you need is the radius. Okay. Here I can see that the center is going to be 3, negative 5, but I don't really care where the center is. I only care about the radius. So in um, the standard form equation for a circle, the r squared is going to go right here. Okay. And then I'm just going to take the square root of both sides of the equation. And that means r is going to equal 8. It wouldn't be, you know, you could say, oh, the square root of 64 could be negative 8. But then you can't have a negative um, uh, radius of a circle because it's the distance from the center to the outside. Okay. So my radius there is 8. Now I have everything I need. So this would be 16 pi. I don't know what the units are. Um, if they're centimeters or not, so I'll just leave it like that, or about 50.27. Okay, all right, so moving on. Um, next, we're going to find the measure of arc AB. So we're going to find the measure of this arc here. Now, this is a central angle because I can see that that's marked as the center of the circle. So the, the measure of an arc is the same as the measure of the central angle that intercepts it. So the measure of arc AB is just 30 degrees. That's all there is to that. But that's different than the length of AB. So the length of AB, if you imagine cutting this piece of, this, of the circle out and, and stretching it out flat, that's going to be the length and, and measuring it. That would be the length of AB. The measure of AB is just talking about how big the angle is that cuts it out, but the length is the length of this piece, okay? So what you can do is you can think about that as part of the circumference, right? It's like the circumference just of that slice of, of pi, right? Not of the whole pi, okay? So when I'm um, asked for the length of an arc, I just think about that as part of the circumference. Okay, so, well, what part? Well, I know the whole circle is 360 degrees, so I'm using 30 degrees out of the 360 degrees. So it's that much of the circle, that's the part. Okay, and then circumference, I would use 2 pi r. And I know that the radius is 5, so I'm going to use 2 pi times 5. Okay, and now I just have to start simplifying this, okay? So we can reduce this fraction. So, you know, you can cross out the zeros, right? You could divide by 10 over 10, so that would be 3 over 36. 
which would reduce to 1 12th. And you could use a calculator too to simplify that if you wanted to. And then 2 pi times 5 is 10 pi. And so this is going to give me 10 pi over 12. And I can still reduce that as well because 10 over 12 would be 5 over 6. So this would reduce to 5 pi over 6. Okay. And then my units here are centimeters. So if I wanted an exact answer, there I go. And if you want um, to do a decimal approximation, you could do 5 times, you know, I'd use a pi button on your calculator or 3.14 if you don't have a pi button. So 5 times pi and then divide that by 6 and it should come out pretty close to 2.62 centimeters. Okay. All right. There's one on the next uh, page for you to try. Um, so you could pause the video if you want to and try it out. Um, I'm just going to get going on it. So we just got a new circle here. Um, find the measure of arc AB. So I'm finding the measure of this arc and it's just 120 degrees. Okay, the length is part of the circumference. So I'm going to do 120 out of the 360 degrees. That's how, how much of that circle I'm dealing with. And circumference, 2 pi times the radius. Okay, and then I'll just start simplifying this. So this would be 12 over 36 if I divided by 10 on top and bottom. And that's going to reduce to one third. Okay, so this gives me six pi over three, which is two pi. So there's my exact answer, and there's my approximate answer. Oh, there it is. Sorry, I was off screen there. All right, um, okay, moving on to something different. Okay, I'm gonna introduce something called the unit circle. So this is gonna be a circle that's centered at the origin or at the point zero, zero. Okay, so that means it's going to be on an X, Y axis like, like this one is here, okay? And it also has a radius of one unit. Okay, that's why it's called the unit circle because the radius is one. But you also have to know that it, it would be centered at zero, zero. Okay, so I'm going to put one in here for the radius. Okay, um, so I want to talk about um, some different things. So let's say that I, just with my highlighter here, let's say I superimposed an angle like that on the circle. Okay, now... Um, I know if since this is on an xy axis that that corner is going to be 90 degrees, right? So I, that means I can say that this, I'm going to put 90 degrees there. This is actually going to be zero degrees down here, okay? And you can think about it kind of opening up like a clock until it gets to 90 degrees. So that blue angle has a measure of 90 degrees, okay? And that means every quarter turn is a 90 degree turn. So if this is 90, then this would be 180 down here. Okay, and then if I add another 90 to that, I get to 270. Okay, and then if I add another 90, I am back around to 360. So 360 degrees and zero degrees are in the same place. And on a unit circle, that's always how we start. Zero degrees would be here, and then it goes around to 360 degrees. Okay. Um, so... Um, we can talk about that angle in degrees, but there's a second way you can measure angles, and that's in radians. Okay, so I'm going to try to describe what radians is. Um, so a radian measure describes how much of the circumference of a circle is getting intercepted by an angle in standard position. Okay, so with this blue angle that I marked here, I can see that, hey, that's a quarter of the circle, okay? But let's think about what the circumference of this circle would be, all right? So the circumference here, I'm using 2 pi r, but wait a minute, I know that the radius is 1, right? Because it's the unit circle. 
So that means the circumference here is going to be 2 pi. All right. So that means if I'm doing a 360 degree angle, I can also call this 2 pi. The, the circumference there is 2 pi. Um, so, sorry, I was getting ahead of myself. So if that's 2 pi, that's all the way around at 360 degrees, okay? So that means halfway over here, that's halfway to 2 pi. So um, this is going to be pi. And halfway to pi is going to be a half pi, or you could write that as pi over 2, okay? So 90 degrees is equivalent to pi over 2 radians, okay? So this is radian measure here. So it just describes, oh, the circumference of this piece, just that part. Well, it's a quarter of the whole circle, and, and the whole circle is, uh, is 2 pi. So a quarter of 2 pi is pi over 2. So that's pi over 2 radians. So now it becomes really important that um, to, to write in the degree symbol when you mean degrees. Because if you don't put the degree symbol when you're talking about the measure of an angle, then... Um, then that's really radians. So usually you don't write out the word radians. I just did that because it's the first time I've, I've uh, introduced radian measure, okay? And while we're at it, let's get 270 in there. So if I know every quarter turn is, in every 90 degree turn is pi over two, so I can kind of just count it out. This is one pi over two, two pi over two would reduce to that, right? So this must be three pi over two, and then four pi over two would reduce to two pi. Oh, by the way, this zero degrees is also zero radians. Okay. All right. So, um, first thing you need to know how to do is to convert back and forth from um, radians to degrees and also from degrees to radians. Okay. And this is how I do it. I always use this place. This is the most convenient um convenient place to use um, for converting, that's going to be my conversion factor. And it's most convenient because I've got one pi. I'd rather not deal with the fractions. Okay, So um, what I'm going to do every time I need to convert, I'm going to say, well, OK, I know pi radians is equivalent to 180 degrees. Okay, So I'm going to set up a proportion. Pi radians is to 180 degrees as I don't know how many radians is to 36 degrees, okay? I don't know how many radians, but I can figure it out now just by cross multiplying. So that's what I'm gonna do, okay? So this is gonna give me 180x. I'm not gonna bother putting in degrees because I know my final answer is gonna be in radians, okay? And then I've got 36 pi for my other cross product. All right. All right, now I'm gonna divide by 180 to get x isolated. Okay, and I've got my answer, but I still want to clean it up a little bit. So I'm gonna still reduce, I'm gonna leave it in terms of pi. You could write it as a decimal, but usually we leave it in terms of pi but you still need to reduce this part. So I can see they're both even numbers, right? So they are gonna reduce. Um, so that's gonna, it, they actually are gonna reduce to one fifth. If you can use a calculator to do that if you want, or you just keep dividing until you, you get it reduced all the way, okay? So one fifth um, times pi, usually write it like that, right? Because I could write the one in front of the pi, but you don't need it because I can see there's one pi. I don't need to write one, okay? And there is my radian measure of a 36 degree angle, okay? So let's try going the other direction. Here we've got something in radians already and we're gonna go to degrees. So I'm gonna use the same conversion factor. Pi radians is to 180 degrees as well, this time I know the radian measure, so I'm going to put 3 pi over 4 for my radian measure up there. I don't know how many degrees this is going to be, so that's where my x goes, okay? So um, sometimes this can, um, can intimidate people because I've got a fraction with three layers there, but 
don't worry about that. Um, we're still going to go through this in the same way. Okay, so I'm still going to cross multiply. So um, I've got pi times x here, one of my cross products, and then I've got 180 times 3 pi over 4. Okay, now, um, now um, I'm going to leave the left side alone for just a second. And I'm going to rewrite this as 3 fourths times pi, like this, OK? And the reason I'm doing that is because I just want to show you, I'm trying to get x by itself, right? So I'm going to have to divide by pi at some point. But if you look at it like this, hey, those are going to cancel, and those are going to cancel as well, OK? So you don't have to rewrite it like this, but I just wanted to show you why, when you divide by pi over here, that that pi is going to cancel. So x is going to equal 180 times 3 fourths, OK? So I could just do 180 times 3 and then divide that by 4. And that's going to come out to 135, OK? And you want to be careful here. If you leave your answer like that, it's actually wrong because this says 135 radians. Well, I just converted to degrees, right? So I want my final answer in degrees. That degree symbol is really important. It really means something. OK. All right, I've got two more examples um, just like these on the next page. You can pause the video and try them out if you like. Um, I'm going to start working through them. OK, first one, I'm going to convert 210 degrees to radians. Pi is 180 degrees as I don't know how many radians is to 210 degrees, OK? And then I'm going to cross multiply. And then divide by 180. Okay, and then finally, I'll reduce the fraction. And I got 7 pi over 6 radians. Okay. Next up, pi over 180 degrees equals 4 pi over 3 radians over x degrees. Okay, So pi radians is to 180 degrees. It's 4 pi over 3 radians is to I don't know how many degrees. Okay. Cross multiply. When I divide by pi, that's going to happen. So I'm just going to end up with 180 times 4 thirds. Okay. 180 times 4 is 720. 720 divided by 3 is going to come out to exactly 240. And then uh, convert it to degrees, so don't forget that degree symbol. And that is my answer. And that's also all I have today. All right, see you next time.